Somehow by the end of this video, we're gonna cram this $1,500 living room PC into the all new Fractal Design Era ITX. Wish me luck. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. For those who have followed my channel for quite some time, you know I am a bit of a VR junkie. Now, I know VR is not for everyone, but it is something that I really enjoy. And with Half-Life Alex coming out here in the next week or so, I figured I wanted to build myself a proper living room gaming PC to use for virtual reality. Off to my left is about $1,500 with gaming parts that I think would make a fantastic virtual reality system. And we are going to cram all of it into the all new Fractal Design Era ITX. Now when Fractal told me this case was coming out, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it based on the pictures. I knew I wanted to build a living room gaming PC. It looks like a piece of furniture. It absolutely looks like something that would go into a living room. So we're gonna attempt to build essentially a near silent virtual reality gaming rig that I can use upstairs. You are not helping. I know you think you're helping, but you're not helping. Yes, I love you too and it appears Rambo is also a fan. So what are we putting inside the system today? I'm gonna to go back to my MSI B450i gaming AC motherboard to run at the heart of this thing. The integrated AC Wi-Fi, NVMe drive, and support for 3000 series Ryzen processors should make this the perfect fit. I have an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X 8 core 16 threaded CPU. 8 core 16 threads might be a little bit overkill for a VR PC, but overkill is underrated in my opinion. That's why I also went with a 16 gigabyte kit of Patriot Viper Steel Series 4400 MHz DDR4 and a one terabyte VP4100 NVMe drive. Keeping that 3700X on ice is gonna be the job of the Deepcool Captain 240 Pro. And yeah, I know there's addressable RGB on here, I think it's just fine in a case with no windows, right? The power supply for today is also from Fractal Design. It's their Ion 760 Plus. It's an 80 plus platinum rated unit and is fully modular. That is something that is really handy inside of an ITX case, given the size constraints and cable management that typically comes with them. And last but not least, I told you I had a cool project coming up with this. This is the Zotac Gaming RTX 2070 Super, and I can't wait to run this thing through its paces. Now that the introductions are out of the way, what do you say we uh, get this thing together? You're gonna help, right? Of course you are. Something went wrong. Second video in a row, I have to break out the whiskey. And no, I'm not just doing it on purpose. Now, in my defense, at the top of the video, I did say hopefully all the parts I had on the table were gonna fit inside the Fractal Design era here. Uh, unfortunately, they do not. I already did have to swap out one part in this build. That was the Deepcool Captain 240 Pro that I was planning on using. And this one's entirely my fault. I just lost the AMD brackets last time I took the thing off a system. 
Instead, we're going to rock the Castle 240EX, also from Deepcool. The downside is we lost the addressable RGB fans that I was going to use to uh, put a little underglow to this wood panel, but it's the same quality cooler, it just won't have any lights on it. But on to some bigger problems, uh, namely the power supply. Now, there's nothing wrong with the ion power supply inside of here, in fact, it works great. The problem is, it's just too large for this particular build. You see, the Fractal Design Era can hold either an ATX power supply, like I have installed right here, or an SFX power supply, which is significantly smaller. Now, when I sketched everything out in my brain, I thought I had plenty of room for clearance for everything. But unfortunately, this power supply has to sit just a little bit too low, and I actually can't get the modular cables into the back of it. If you look closely, you'll see the graphics card is not even slotted into the PCIe slot right now. It's literally just laying on the bottom of the case. Uh, that's because that's as close as I can get it up to the power supply uh, without like bending the card or something. So uh, to finish this build, I need to swap this out for an SFX power supply. Now I do have one SFX power supply in my house, but unfortunately it's still in use, which is what the rest of this whiskey is for. You see that SFX power supply is in my wife's system. So this is the Dr. Zaber Century, and it's a fantastic small form factor case. It is a bit of a bear to take apart, namely because they use Torx head security screws for all of the case screws. Um, and I need to get the power supply out of this thing, which is right in here. And then before the weekend, I probably need to find her a replacement SFX power supply. So I'll probably get right on that. But let's get this thing out of here so I can get this ATX power supply out, so I can get the AIO out, so I can pull the motherboard out, so I can unplug the 8-pin EPS header, so I can finish pulling the power supply out, and then we can put it all back together and hopefully finish up this build. Let's get to it. All right, so a little bit more difficult to get this one done than I originally anticipated, and like I said, it wasn't without some changes along the way. First off, huge shout out to Fractal Design and Zotac for sending over both the case and the Zotac 2070 Super for my review. However, just like all of my reviews, I was not sponsored in any way, shape, or form. The products were provided free of charge, and I do get to keep them when I'm done, but my opinions are my own. And if you think my opinion can be bought with either a case or a graphics card, you have no idea how expensive it is to be a hardware reviewer. Let's talk about the new kit on the block, the Fractal Design Era ITX. I really like the construction of this case. Now, it's certainly not perfect. It has panel gaps that Tesla wouldn't complain about, but I think just about every other car manufacturer would. They're not terrible, but they're also not perfect. I do understand this is the first run of this case, and they may get a little bit more refined as the case lives on. But for right now, the edges, especially right here at the top, just don't quite line up all the way around. 
But minor panel issues aside, the era is actually solid as a rock. It's all aluminum panels on the outside with a steel internal structure, and it weighs officially a whole heck of a lot when it's all put together. The two side panels have a very similar mounting system to the brand new Define 7 in that they just click lock at the top and then lift right off of the case. This is certainly not something you have to worry about coming off in transit as they hold very, very tight to the case when closed. They have identical grills on both sides of the case and a little bit of a body line here reminding me of a silver car door. Now the most obvious external feature of my particular era has got to be the white oak panel up on top, which I think gives this thing a dead sexy look. The era is available in a number of different metal finishes and each one of them come with a unique top. There's a metal top panel and then there's two designs with wood top panels. However, all of the era cases also come with an optional vented panel that you can install. The very nice thing about these top panels and the filter itself on the top of the case is that they are all magnetic. You can just lift this top panel off and replace it with the optional panel if you so choose. The feature list on the ERA ITX is extensively long, however, as I found out, you can't necessarily use all of the features at the same time due to space requirements inside of the case. Inside of the case, you can choose between ATX or SFX and SFXL power supplies up to 200 millimeters long. As far as fans go, there are five total fan placements, two 120 millimeters at the bottom, two 120 millimeters at the top, and an 80 millimeter fan around the rear. However, the only radiator support on this case is the two 120 millimeter slots on the top. There are dust filters at every possible vent on this case, with the exception of the 80 millimeter fan in the rear. For the top dust filter, simply remove the magnetic top. For the bottom ones, you actually have to remove the bottom plate of this case, and then take out the two very thin strips of filter material on the bottom vent. There is support for up to a two-slot graphics card at the bottom of this case, up to 295 millimeters long. However, not if you use a power supply that is over 200 millimeters and you have a radiator in the top of this case, as I found out a little bit earlier tonight. And that brings me very neatly to my earlier point of this case has a lot of features, but you can't use them all at the same time. For example, you can have a two-slot graphics card up to 295 millimeters long. However, you can no longer use the dual 120 millimeter fan slots at the bottom of this case. Likewise, if you'd like to use a full-length graphics card, you need to think very carefully about both the CPU cooler choice and your power supply choice inside of this case, as because I use a 240mm radiator on top, it forced my power supply mount further down in the case, and because I opted for an ATX power supply, it interfered with the graphics card. If you want to use both an AIO and an ATX power supply, you only have 190 millimeters available for your graphics card length, so a Zotac mini card might have been the better route to go in that case. As far as storage configuration goes, one of your 3.5 inch hard drive mounts is on your SFX power supply mount, so if you choose to go with an ATX power supply, that cuts that out immediately. The other mount is located on this little guy right here, which is mounted to the side of the case. This supports either two 2.5 inch SSDs or a single 3.5 inch hard drive. Without this bracket and any hard drives installed on the side of the case, you can put up to a 120mm tall air cooler onto your CPU. Once the bracket is put in, however, with two SSDs, you're limited to just 90 millimeters in cooler height. However, if you add a three and a half inch hard drive to this tray, you are further reduced to 71 millimeters. So the more storage you want inside of this case, the further limited your cooling capacity is going to be. In the gaming configuration that I have this in right now, with a full length graphics card on the bottom and an AIO on the top, there's really no intake fan in this case. The 80 millimeter is an exhaust fan by default. To bring a little bit of fresh air in for the CPU cooler, I did flip that fan around, so now the 80 millimeter is an intake in, as well as the graphics card pulling cold air directly from the bottom of the case. I did try my hand at overclocking the CPU inside of the system, and the results were actually very good. My Ryzen 7 3700X held a 4.3 GHz all-core overclock at just 1.4125 volts, and my memory I achieved a 3733 MHz overclock at just C15. And yes, I can already hear you, but your Patriot Viper Steel memory will do 4400 MHz at Cas19. I know, but AMD actually recommends this exact speed and timing for the CPU, which is why I opted to go with the SteelSeries memory in the first place, as I knew it would be more than capable of hitting that number. As far as cooling performance inside the era goes, I was, I'll say mildly impressed given the very limited intakes on this case. Under stock frequencies, my Ryzen 7 3700X hit a max of 66 degrees running Cinebench until the loop was saturated. Under overclock, it hit a max of just 73.5 degrees Celsius. Now those numbers are not stellar, but this also isn't going to be a video rendering rig. This was built for gaming and gaming alone. We are going to be checking out both the CPU and GPU temperatures as part of my virtual reality benchmark on the system later next week. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you don't miss that one. 
So how do we round up this build? Well, obviously I wasn't able to get all the components inside this case that I wanted to, but in the end, I am pretty happy with the results. Clearances are definitely a little bit tight inside this case, but in Fractal Design's defense, I did put pretty much the max size components I possibly could inside of the era. Again, I'd like to see the era just a little bit taller so I could see additional 120 millimeter fan intakes on the bottom of this case and still be able to use a full length graphics card. If you read the manual and make selections based on any potential clearance issues, you shouldn't have a problem building a pretty fantastic system inside of the era. However, keep in mind that your CPU cooler, storage options, power supply, graphics card, and fan support will be limited based on what components you select. So keep all of those in mind as they will affect other component selections inside of this case. Your power supply selection could limit your storage configuration configuration options, which might make you change your CPU cooler configuration, which might make you drop your power supply mount down a little bit, which could impact your graphics card length options, and any combination of parts there in between. And that is going to do it for me in this one, guys. Make sure to click the thumbs up button if you like this video, or the thumbs down if you are dead inside. Also make sure to subscribe to Craft Computing on your way down there. If you're interested in any of the parts in today's video, I will have a full list of Amazon affiliate links in the video description below. Make sure to give those a click, I would really appreciate it. And make sure to drop me a comment letting me know what you think of the all new Fractal Design Era ITX. Is it the right ITX box for you, or is it just one compromise too many? Thank you guys so much for watching this one, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers guys, and uh, stay safe out there.